take a little time right now to greet each other. Please take the pads in the pew and register that you were here today. And just a reminder, the Festival of Sharing is coming. Please pick up the slips down from the board on the easel in the narthex. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship, worshiping God as we silently listen to the prelude.
please stand if you are able. And we'll say the call to worship together from Matthew. Ask, Ask and it will be given, given to you. you. Seek, Seek and, and you will find. find. Knock and, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be open. And let us say the opening prayer together. Lord, come and meet us in our worship today. Let us seek you in our desire. Let us desire you in our seeking. Let us find you by loving you. And let us love you when we find you. We, we ask, ask this in, in the name, name of Jesus, Jesus the, the Savior. Savior. Amen. best of me is ready to begin. Then there are days when I feel I'm letting go and soaring on the wind. Cause I've learned in laughter or in pain how to survive. I 
can be in a crowd or by myself or almost anywhere when I feel there's a need to talk with God he is Emmanuel and I close my eyes no darkness there and there's only light I get on my knees I get on on i got it yes all right and now uh, we come to a time where we have a chance to give back to god as the ushers come and collect our tithes and offerings
come down and bless this offering. Send your Holy Spirit to multiply it so that it can be spread further to reach all corners of the earth with your love. And we ask all this in your wonderful name. Amen. You may be seated. A couple of um, praises, first of all. Uh, first of all, uh, Kendall, that's... Um, Oh, for goodness sake, names have escaped me. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, your name, I forgot. <laughs> Bev, Bev. Bev Isley's great-granddaughter, um, who comes here, um, will be on the uh, court for uh, Popcorn Festival. So that not that cool? So uh, it will be uh, awesome to watch her in the parade um, that day. And also on Tuesday... Um, Christiana and I, and it's great to have Christiana here today. She surprised me by just showing up. Uh, Christiana and I and um, Noelle's future mother-in-law and adopted grand grandparent um, all went dress shopping. I was dreading it, <laughs> dreading it. Hey, in two hours, we had chosen and paid for a dress and was out eating ice cream. There is a God in heaven. Yay! Is that not awesome? Yes. Yes. Actually, everyone was on their best behavior. It went very well, so we can check that off the list. It's done. Let us remember um, Faye Rosamond. Um, on Thursday, she is going to have her thyroid removed, so let us remember Faye. From the Frank family, to remember Peg Cooper Ryder. She has, that's Kim's aunt. She has a blood clot in her lung, and she's in Galleon. So let us remember her. Christiana's best friend, um, and she was the maid of honor at um, her wedding, Betsy, is right now in the hospital trying to give birth to her first child. Uh, but um, she's been in there since Friday. <laughs> Many of us know how that feels. And she's only right about six centimeters right now. Is that what you said? Yeah. So let us remember Betsy and Brad. Karen Seckle asks us to remember her daughter, Amy. She is in the hospital. She has a possible blood clot. She had surgery a year ago. So let us remember Amy. Diane Rao gives praise for a huge thank you. Thank you for all the great ice, everyone who turned up for the great ice cream social. It appears that our profit is approximately $1,800, which will be given back to the church. So there was, yes, that's absolutely awesome. Um, so um, that was indeed an absolute wonderful turnout if you were here, great food. And I only have one complaint, I didn't get noodles, I, but I should have gone through the line earlier. So, but then if I would have taken them, somebody else would have been without them, right? So a um, uh, huge success. I also have two other things. First of all, you saw the pictures or some pictures from Vacation Bible School. We wanted to show those. We took up a collection for Wings of the Morning, the airplane in the Congo that does all sorts of uh, miracle flights. Um, we took up a collection two days during VBS and in the evening. Um, and I cannot believe this. The Lord is good. We collected $655.88. Wasn't that awesome? So yes, for Wings of the Morning. <laughs> and then finally, another great-grandson born to Dick and Molly Lou. Could we put that picture up? There we go. And he was here one day old at the ice cream social, if you saw him. So... Um, starting him off right, right, with ice cream, yes. Um, so congratulations to all of them. Let's go to the Lord in prayer today.
Oh, Lord, our God, what a privilege it is to come here to this place of worship and meet you every Sunday. You meet us at other times, too. But sometimes we're too busy and we don't stop and listen and just praise you for who you are. So that's why we're here today. So come and be in our presence. Let us feel you as you fill our lives. And as we leave here, we go out to share that love with others. Lord, we pray for all the people out in the world who don't know that what they're missing in their lives is Jesus. Maybe there'll be somebody this week that we can touch and just say some word of encouragement and tell them and share the love of Jesus with them. Lord, you've heard your people's prayers and we lift up each and every one. Remember those in hospital, Lord. We remember our shut-ins, those at the nursing home and those in their own homes. Pour out your love on them. Lord, we remember those who have recently lost loved ones. And we remember those who are bringing children into this world. Be with the homeless, the jobless, those in need, people around the world who still go hungry and thirsty. Be with those incarcerated and those fighting addictions. Be with our church, our community, Lord, as we seek ways to go and make disciples of Jesus Christ. Empower us to go out back to the beach and share your story with others. And we lift up today the prayer that you taught us as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Be this I know. You can say hi, it's all right. Hi, thank you. I appreciate it. Whew. Okay, hey, you know, growing up, you're not as tall as everybody else, right? Sometimes that's a disadvantage. It's a bad thing being short. Can you think of some ways it's bad being short? You ever had any trouble being short? Can't reach stuff, especially on those higher shelves, right? How do you overcome that? How do you get something from a, a high shelf that you can't reach? Think of no idea? Do you have an idea? Oh, oh, put it on a small, uh, lower shelf. Good, yes, that's a good idea. Yes. Oh, how can you, how, how? When you're older, 
that's a good, how about we could get somebody to get it down for us, right? Yep. How many of you ever climbed on a chair or even on the counter? We won't tell anyone. Yeah. Okay, yes, I know I did that lots of times. Well, sometimes I still do. It's a secret. We won't tell your mom. No, don't worry about it. Your secret's safe with me, Aaron. Yes. Okay, so um, there was a man in the Bible who was short, and he couldn't see. Have you ever been trying to watch something, and someone taller than you has stood in front of you, and you can't see anything? That is so annoying, isn't it? It is mean. Sometimes I know I would pick my kids up and put them on my shoulders so that they could see. You ever had dad or mom do that? Yep, that's cool too. There's a man in the Bible. His name was Zacchaeus, and he was really short. Do you know that name? Do you remember there's a song about it, him? Do you remember that? Do you guys remember the Zacchaeus song? We're going to sing it together. You ready? Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree, for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree, and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm coming to your house today. For I'm coming to your house today. Very good. Yeah, there's a lot of you who could remember that far back. I'm very impressed. So, well, we know that story, but sometimes we don't really know or any more about Zacchaeus than he was a small man. And I'm v- a, a, dawn, a dawn's church, uh, very good. Yes, but we don't we don't look at any more than Zacchaeus being a little man who met Jesus. But there's a lot more to the story, and that's what we're going to learn about today. So being small doesn't mean you cannot love Jesus, right? So all of us should love Jesus. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we thank you for everything you give us. And we thank you for the story of Zacchaeus that we're going to learn about today and help us to remember, no matter how big, how small we are, you love all of us the same. In your name we pray, amen. And you can go to the back and get a bulletin if you would like. stand for the reading of the scripture. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, Here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. This is the word of God from long ago for the people of God today. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, open up our hearts, our minds, and let us spend a few moments meditating on your word. 
change us from the inside out so that we can show, can, we can be like you wherever we go. In your name we pray. Amen. Zacchaeus' story, like I said to the kids, many of us adults have not gone any deeper than that children's song that we learned years ago. And a lot of times our spiritual faith doesn't get any deeper than that as we get older. So today we're going to look at this story and we're going to see that it teaches us about God's love, about discipleship, about commitment and salvation. All of that in one little story, one song that we learned when we were little. This story takes place as Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem to be killed. He's already told his disciples that he will be killed, and they're having trouble understanding that. And on his way, he goes through Jericho. And Jesus already knows... Hang on, I've got to turn this off a minute. There we go, sorry. Jesus already knows that he is going to meet Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus doesn't know that, and the scripture doesn't specifically say that. But we're going to see as the story unfolds that Jesus already knows this is going to happen. He is calling Zacchaeus for a specific purpose. Jericho is where this story takes place. Jericho is one of the oldest cities in the world. They have found relics that date back to about 9,000 BC. Now that is a long time ago, isn't it? As um, if you've ever been there, if you've been to Israel, I hope you had the opportunity to visit Jericho. They have uncovered layer upon layer of civilizations. It's absolutely amazing to go and see all the archaeological work that's going on there. But Jericho is a town with a reputation. What would you say Marion has a reputation for? You don't have to say it out loud. Probably a lot of things. Jericho is associated with Cleopatra, and King Herod. Okay, that's not good right there to start with, is it? If you remember anything from history. It is said to have been built under a curse. It is the closest town to the Jordan River where Jesus was baptized. He was baptized very close to there. And then he went into the wilderness and was tempted. There's a lot of mystery around this town. And of course, Jesus is there. And wherever Jesus is, there is a cleansing, a renewing. So it's right that he was in Jericho for this story. Zacchaeus, a lot of people are named Zach today, and many of them, it's a, an abbreviation for the name Zacchaeus. His name means pure or righteous. That's amazing because if we know anything at all about Zacchaeus, it's that he was a, what was he? A tax collector. Pure, righteous, tax collector. He's not living up to his name is what we would say at first glance, right? In Bible times, People were named for who they were going to be. Today, names are important, but I don't think as important as they were in Jesus' time. Re bear that in mind as we go on with the story of Zacchaeus. Let's talk about how this short story shows God's love. Jesus does not discriminate. We do. 
I do. It's kind of built into us. All of us discriminate in some fashion. I don't want to. Uh, That's a good thing. I don't want to, and I'm sure you don't either. But we do discriminate, don't we? Look at the people you hang around with. They're probably different than the diversity we see around our wor- in our world. We choose who we hang with. Zacchaeus was not only a tax collector, he was a chief tax collector. Tax collectors were hated in that ta- those times by Jews because they did not want to pay Roman taxes. It's kind of like today. How many of you love paying taxes? I don't see any hands, okay? Now, many of us may benefit from the money that the taxes produce, but a lot of it is wasted. Would you agree with me? And we don't like to pay taxes. So can you imagine how much Zacchaeus was hated? Today, it's taken out of our paychecks or we pay a quarterly bill. We don't actually have to meet the people who collect unless you go to court. But in, that de- in, these, in Jesus' day, these tax, ele- tax collectors would go house to house picking up the money. Could you imagine? How would you feel with a tax collector coming up to your door and saying, this is what you owe? Can you imagine some of the things people would have said to them, the way they were treated? And Zacchaeus was so good at his job, he was made chief tax collector. If there's anything worse than a tax collector, it's the one who leads them all, right? Can you imagine the hatred that was shown to Zacchaeus through his life. He was a Jew. So not only did the Jews now hate him because he was collecting the taxes that were due plus more because that was his salary, and we already know he was a very wealthy man, but he was hated by the Romans because he was a Jew. Being a Jew, he wanted to go to the synagogue the temple, and worship his God. Can you imagine if that tax collector was here today? Where would he sit? He would have to sneak in and sit at one of the chairs in the back or way back in the balcony, right? Nobody would want to be associated with him. They would choose the opportunity to put him down right there, even in the temple, But not all tax tax collectors were bad. They may have been hated. And today even, we tend to think of groups. If we know a person belonging in a group, or people who are different from us, by skin color, by the way they appear, tattoos or um, ring, uh, uh, different kinds of piercings, that's what I'm trying to say. We think all of them are bad, but they're not, are they? So it was in Jesus' time that not all tax collectors were bad. But Jesus sees in Zacchaeus something special, even with His death in his sights, Jesus picked Zacchaeus to build a relationship with. Why? Because he sees his heart. We're going to be talking about how Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. Many theologians write that Zacchaeus was a secret admirer of Jesus, kind of like Nicodemus. 
We understand Nicodemus because at least he was on the council of the Sanhedrin. So he already has history. He's already a respected person. But someone like Zacchaeus, seriously, he's an admirer of Jesus. But he was. But he couldn't do it publicly because of his job. And in his job, he had climbed the ladder to chief tax collector. He had a certain skill set that Jesus was going to use for the building of the kingdom of God. Each one of us has a skill set. And Jesus says we can use that to build his kingdom. Zacchaeus had influence. He knew many people. They may have all hated him, but he knew them. And if his life changed around, how could he reach out to those people that they too could hear the message of Jesus Christ? You see, Jesus saw the possibilities in Zacchaeus' life, not the things that people hated. Zacchaeus was on the discipleship track. The scripture tells us he wanted to see who Jesus was. What does that mean? He already knew who Jesus was. He had obviously heard his messages, probably sitting way in the back of the crowd, blending in so nobody would notice him. He knew who he was, and he wanted a relationship with him, but he didn't know how to go about it. He knew he was coming to his hometown. And the scripture tells us that he couldn't see because the crowd was blocking his way. Can you imagine? It'd be like a kid trying to push to the front. Have you ever been in a crowd where there's somebody shorter than you trying to stand in front of you to see something? Normally, we let them through. Can you imagine Zacchaeus saying, can I see, can I see? And they would stand even closer together because they hated him. They didn't want him to see Jesus. So he ran ahead. He knew where Jesus was going to go, and he climbed up in a tree. Now, I have always imagined a sycamore tree, right? And so he's climbed way up in the branches, and the branches and the leaves are hiding him. So he can see, but nobody else can see him. Well, that's false. That's not how it is at all. A sycamore fig tree bears figs. And their branches are low to the ground. The twigs and the leaves are small. So when Zacchaeus climbed the tree, he was probably only about this high. And very visible to everyone, not just Jesus. But at this point, Zacchaeus has already been on the shoreline. He's even come into the water to hear Jesus speak. But now on this day, he's at that third stage of discipleship, and he's walking in the water because he's going to see Jesus. He's sitting in the tree with anticipation. He knows people are looking at him, but now he doesn't care. His eyes are not focused on them. They're focused on only Jesus. He is the one he's come to see. And as Jesus gets closer to the tree, Jesus stops and looks up at him. And he says, Zacchaeus, Get on down here right now, because I'm coming to your house today. In our world, we would think that was pretty forthright, you know. How rude to suddenly announce you're going to somebody's house for a meal. But in Jesus' day, that was counted as a privilege. It was a, a word of honor when a rabbi would tell you he was going to come to your house Can you imagine how excited Zacchaeus is? One-on-one, he's focusing with Jesus. And then something unusual happens. Zacchaeus starts to speak. And we see his commitment. He says, I'm telling you right now, Lord, I'm going to give half of what I have to the poor. 
And then for anyone I've cheated, I'm not only going to pay them back, but I'm going to pay them back four times how much I cheated them. Now, if you figure it out, Zacchaeus isn't going to have much left after that, is he? Because he's probably cheated most of the people that he took taxes from. We see here his total commitment. And I would like to take it a step further. The Bible doesn't tell us that that's what Zacchaeus did. But when this story happened before Jesus' birth, uh, death, sorry, so many years later, Luke writes this story in his gospel. My feeling is it would never have got in there if Zacchaeus hadn't followed through, if Zacchaeus hadn't been become a, de a devoted follower of Jesus Christ. Zacchaeus' action reflected what was already going on inside of him, in his heart, in his mind, in his soul. Our actions, our behavior, what we say, what we don't say, what we do, what we don't do, reflects our discipleship, our relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus went to Zacchaeus' house, Zacchaeus house and other people, the high and mighty church people of the day, said, he is going to eat with a sinner. Jesus can come and eat with me anytime, right? We're all sinners. And that's what the Pharisees forgot. They were labeling the sinners. How often do we do that? Zacchaeus had a commitment before this story even started. But when he gave away everything and paid back in debt, he was probably left with very little. In this story, we don't know how long it took. He goes from being at the shoreline to stepping out into the water to going and see Jesus to power stroking when Jesus is talking with him, giving up everything he had so he could go and make disciples and became a fully committed follower of Jesus Christ. On that day, Zacchaeus gained salvation. We gain salvation when we fully commit to Jesus Christ. Sometimes we take a step back and then we must ask forgiveness and we get a fresh dose of God's love, a fresh start at salvation. And I say amen to that. On that day, Zacchaeus made up his mind that he was going to go out and seek Jesus. He found him. He confessed. He sought forgiveness. And his heart, mind, soul, his whole body was transformed. He was saved. So what about us? Do you really know that God is everywhere and he loves everyone? He loves you. He loves me. He loves those on the street who don't know yet that they need to know Jesus Christ. Our discipleship must continue to grow. We must wade deeper out into the ocean. And salvation is just waiting for us. It's available to anyone and everyone. How appropriate that this message comes on the Sunday we have communion. When communion is a means of grace offered to everyone. Yes, even us sinners. We ask for forgiveness and God grants us that forgiveness. And he blesses us with his grace in the form of communion today.
So where are you on your discipleship journey? Where do you fit in to Zacchaeus' story? Are you ready to climb a tree, to see Jesus, to seek him out? And then no matter what is going on around you, to say, in spite of everything, I am going to be a devoted follower of Jesus Christ today. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, our God, Zacchaeus teaches us some valuable lessons. People will talk about us and we will talk about others, but the most important thing in life should be for us to keep our faces on Jesus, to seek him out in all situations. Lord, you are waiting today as any other day with your arms open wide, to receive us back into your arms. We ask for forgiveness. We know that you will forgive us. And then come and fill that empty spot with your love to overflowing so that we can go out into the world and demonstrate your love and pass it on to others. And we ask all this in your wonderful name. Amen. Pastor Joe. And then Jesus took the cup, and after asking for a blessing from his Father above, he said, this is the cup of a new covenant, a new promise that I make for you today. My blood will be shed for the forgiveness of your sins, the hope of everlasting life. What a gift. Jesus celebrated communion for the first time before he died to be a picture, a remembrance of who he is, then, now, and forever, the Savior of the world. Let us pray. O oh Lord, pour out your love, pour out your Holy Spirit on these symbols, this bread, and these cups, and let them become for us the body and the blood of Jesus Christ that transforms us as we take and eat and drink. Lord, pour out your love on us. Forgive us of our sins and love us in spite of ourselves. And we ask all this in your wonderful name. Amen. Would those who are helping please come forward?
the table is set, Jesus invites all to come to his table. Won't you come today and receive Christ? The ushers will dismiss you.
But Lord, we have come. We have seen you. We have received you. Now live in us. Empower us to love you without ceasing and to overflow with your love to us. Bless us, Lord, so that we can go out and bless you. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us stand and sing our final song. <laughs> If I die before any of you, you'll find me in heaven because I'm going to be up there singing this song. It's my favorite song. And do you remember, it was been a while ago, but I told you when we would sing this at church, my four kids, you know, sitting in the front row so I could give them the evil eye, they would sit there and I looked one time when we were singing in this and they were going, plunge me to victory. And I looked up at the chorus and there's Christiana doing those same motions, I'll tell you. 
But I'm going to be rejoicing in heaven. And I'm going to get to meet Zacchaeus. And I'm hoping to fill in the gaps of his story. But he set a great example for us, right? Seek Jesus. Look for him. And then give your life to him. And you'll never be the same again. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, you sure have been present in this service today. And now pour out your Holy Spirit upon us because we need it when we go back to the beach and out into the world. Touch us, empower us, and let us, let us never lose sight of your love, not only for us, but for the whole world. And we ask this in your wonderful name and all God's people say, Amen.